Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And very good morning everyone. So let's start the class with the Umul Kitab Al-Fatihah. Okay. Uh, okay, can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, so let me share the slide first. Uh, as I promised uh, uh, yesterday, okay, I have told your class rep so that uh, if you uh, have a problem or if you try to... Uh, this week, we will start with the chapter, new chapter, eh, which is chapter 5, the energy. Okay, so if you want to do some recap, you can watch uh, all my all the recording uh, from the previous uh, week in the Google Classroom. I already put that link. Uh, okay. Right, so let's share the slide. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So for this week, okay, we will start the new chapter, which is chapter energy. All right. So in this chapter, okay, we will learn a lot about work. All right. A kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, work, energy theorem. All right. A gravitational potential energy. Okay. A spring. Potential energy, what is the difference between gravitational potential energy and the spring potential energy? And then we go to the energy conservation, okay, power, and lastly, work done by the bearing force. Okay, so these are the units of the chapter 5, right? So, <coughs> so uh, work done by a constant force. Uh, the definitions of work where the force is parallel to the displacement. So, W is equivalent to F dot D. Okay, W is equivalent to F dot D. What is F dot D? That means force. F stands for force. And D is displacement. Okay, force times displacement. Okay, normally uh, when, you, when you put a dot that... Uh, here, that means it should be multiplied. Okay, multiply. Okay, how we multiply the vectors? Because force is a vector quantity and displacement is also vector quantity. So there are two uh, vector quantity. When we multiply two vector quantities, we should multiply it with the uh, either a multi uh, multiply it through dot product, which is here. This is dot product. Okay. And another one is the uh, cross product. Okay, for the dot product, okay, the outcome of the dot product will give you um, a scalar quantity. Okay, so that means in the end, when you calculate thing uh, work, you may get a scalar quantity. Okay, so when you multiply force with the dis uh, displacement once again, okay, we multiply it to through dot product okay so in the end if you notice okay that the dot product the outcome of the dot product will be the scalar quantity so what is the scalar quantity the square the, the quantity that have a magnitude without directions all right okay so uh, this is the, the beauty of force where we learn about force and we learn about factors okay we should know that uh, even when you have two vectors, okay, when you have two uh, quantity vectors, uh, or you will multiply two quantity vectors, you still can get the scalar quantity. Okay, so it's not just a, a matter of uh, when you have one quantity of vectors, or, or another one is not vectors, okay, you may get a scalar quantity, okay? It's not just that, not just that, but uh, we consider this one is either 
uh, the multiplications take place either using a, a dot product or a cross product. Okay, so dot product is a dot product. When you multiply the dot product, you may get a scalar quantity. So for example, when you have a force like this, okay, for example, this boy is pushing a box through some displacement here. Okay, so the boy, the boy applying force, some force, and this is the displacement. So this box is moving from one point. Okay, let's say this is X not, and this is X. Okay, so the delta X here, it should be X minus X not, meaning that there will be displacement. Okay, displacement at X exists because the box is placed, the box is moved from X not to X, two point X. So we may uh, uh, minus or we may uh, subtract the X to the minus, uh, X not to get the delta X. So in the end, that delta X is considered to be this displacement. Okay. So work, eh, for example, is a scalar quantity. Okay. And we often use it as joule. But the unit for work is joule. J O U L E, or sometimes we just put it as J. Okay, uh, don't get confused between how to get the, the value of uh, un the units for work. Just use Joule. Okay, a simple one, Joule. Okay. Okay, for instance, uh, an intern, well, this is an example, an intern pushes a 72 kilogram patient on a 15 kilogram journey. Okay, producing an acceleration of 0 0.6 meter per second square. So, this should be the acceleration. This should be the mass of the, uh, of the patients and 50 kilogram of the journey. Okay. How much work does the intent do by pushing? Okay, by pushing the patient and journey through a distance of, so it should be D. Assume that the journey moves without friction so the assume is very important in physics okay because uh, when we apply a force remember yeah uh, uh, you know, last week we learned about force okay submission of force when you call a uh, submission of force remember we should yeah uh, have uh, we should uh, acknowledge uh, we should uh, consider every forces at all angle at all exists okay to be considered as the submission of, of either is to be in the y exists or x exists doesn't matter but we need to know which is the force that should be uh, on the same exists as the uh, displacement okay for example okay uh, a submission of force that we should consider whenever we are uh, solving the problems of work okay we need to consider a submission of force or of forces that is in the same axis as the displacement. For example, uh, this gurney and the patient is moving okay, on the x axis. Okay, this is the x axis. Okay, so we should consider every forces that move along the x axis. Yes, we know that the gurney and the patient also have a y axis. For example, they may also have uh some weight going down okay yeah okay, weight going down and maybe slightly a, a normal force okay maybe contribute by the tires right but we didn't consider that because we are focused on the the uh, 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 force that is parallel to the a uh, 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 components of force that parallel to the displacement remember when you do the work we need to know the parallel the, the component of force that parallel to the displacement okay so in this case okay, obviously we can see that the gurney is moving on the y uh, on the x axis so we need to know the force that uh, contribute to that uh, y uh, x axis okay so by that, for example this is the applied force happen to the patient and then of course it is in all in the x axis so we need we can we can take all force for all this force and multiply it with the displacement in order to get the uh, work. Okay, so that's why the the questions at the part A 
how much work does the intern do? Okay, how much work? Okay, so considering that, we need to know the force first because uh, it doesn't state here uh, what is the force. So we need to calculate the force. So by using the again, uh, submission of F equals to M A. So we need to you know this one is the submission of F X. Okay, what's happening in this uh, F X? We have seventy two. A mass, a double mass, okay, which is the basis and the gurney times with the accelerations. So we will get 52 Newton force, okay. And then by using the formula of W equal to the 2F, okay, dot D. Normally we didn't put that dot, we just put it as FD, okay. So we will get 52 times with 2.5 to get 130 joule. Take out your calculator, you can uh, easily calculate calculate the, the value together, okay? And then, of course, and part B, how far must the intern push the gurney to do 140 joule? Okay, now we need to do some reverse calculations, okay? Because we already have W equals to FD, and then we need to find what is the D by using 150 joule, divide with the uh, force 52 newtons, and then we may get 2.7 meters. So, the gurney should be pushed 2.7 meters. That's slightly uh, 20 centimeters uh, um, different between the original one. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, not 20, uh, yes, 20 centimeters. Okay? 2.7 minus 2.5 is about 0 0.2 meters. Okay, 0 0.2 meters different from the part A. Okay, so what happened, huh? Uh, I like to uh, acknowledge a lot yeah, what is the work done. Work is F dot D, a simple one, okay? But whenever you have a situation like this, okay, for example, you have a situa situation where the force is in, uh, that force that you are calculating now is in, uh, is in a component. It's, it will have a component due to the angle that happens during the situations. For example, this man is pull is uh, is pulling his back, okay, pulling tari, eh, tari back there, okay, with a certain angle, with a certain force at a certain angle. Okay, and then of course when we have a certain a force that have a certain angle, okay, we need to do some resolve into its component. Now we have F cos theta, and on this right we have F sin theta. Okay, F cos theta and F sin theta. Okay, but again, you need to know the concepts of force that work. Eh? W equals to F dot D. Okay, but on the precisely, you need to know that the component, we need to know component of force that parallel to the this. Yes, that is the correct terms in order to understand force and to understand work. Okay, the work okay, is actually a component of force that parallel to the displacement. So, when you look at this uh, uh, definitions, okay, or uh, we may have a component of force that is F sine theta, and of course here is F cos theta. Okay, which consideration, okay, which component should we use in order to calculate work? Okay, definitely, we should point to the F cos theta. Why F cos theta? Because F cos theta is the component of force that parallel to the displacement here, D. Okay, so in this case, we can write down uh, the equation to become like this. W is equivalent to F cos theta times d. Okay. F cos theta times d. So, we can write down as w equal to f d cos theta. Okay. So, this is the, uh, what we call that, uh, the true equations that involve force and uh, displacement.
Okay, normally we just put it as W equals to FD. Okay, during your school days, maybe you can write down W equals to F kali S. Okay, uh, sesaran kali dengan force. Okay, but we need to do precisely, okay, what happened is, uh, in the work done is F dot D. Okay, why F dot D? Because the difference between um, uh, dot product and cross product. Dot product obviously will give you scalar quantity. Okay, while cross product, okay, we may have ambiguous solution. Maybe we can get a, a, a vector. Yeah, maybe we can get a vector. And maybe if you put a modulus, then you may get a scalar quantity. Okay, so that's why in this case, work is fall under a scalar quantity. Okay, if I'm not, mis if I'm not mistaken, okay, one of the questions in your quiz is also asking about uh, everything except uh, uh, whatever, every uh, quantity is a vector except. Uh, but, okay. One of the questions also involve work. Okay. So work is a scalar quantity, so we need to do dot a w equals to f dot d. So the true meaning of the f dot d is here, f d cos theta. Why? Because a uh, force should be uh, we we should use force. Okay, we should use force um, that parallel the component of force that parallel to the displacement. Okay. Um, we may not see these things happen during your school days because we often use uh, W equals to FD um, and normally force doesn't have an angle associated with, okay? For example, uh, during your school days maybe, the questions always not involve, okay? Maybe because of the level of the questions, it doesn't involve like F theta, okay? For example, uh, you may see the force is always either going to the Y axis or straight to the X axis. So that's why you easily can calculate work because you can, let's say the force here is 10 Newton. This is also 10 Newton, okay? And the displacement is going to that way, for example, okay? So easily you can calculate 10 divided by 10, you uh, multiply by 10, you may get 100 Joule. Okay, because it's st straightly, uh, the component is on the axis, uh, x axis. Okay, because it's, uh, we can easily calculate it, we easily can multiply the force, which is all uh, with the comp uh, component of uh, the x component. Uh, straight to the displacement. So that's why we can get, we can easily calculate, but not in the university level. Okay, because in the university level, they always have a higher uh, the true definitions. Okay, we should consider the true definition, which is W equivalent to FD cos theta. Okay. So uh, what is FD cos theta? It is it is it, it should be this one should be f cos theta f cos theta dot d okay sorry f cos theta dot d okay f cos theta this one what component of force times with the displacement component of force that parallel to the displacement so w equals to f cos theta dot d okay all right. These are some examples. One of the other examples that use uh, the concepts of F cos theta. Okay. A gravity escape system. Okay. In the gravity escape system, GES, an enclosed lifeboat on a large ship is deployed by letting it slide down a ramp and then continuing in a free fall to the water below. Suppose a 4970 kilogram lifeboat slides a distance of 5 meters on a ramp, dropping through a vertical height 2.5 meters. 
how much work does gravity do on the boat? Okay, we often we use, uh, we get to use uh, the questions, but how much work is done by this? How much work is done by this and this and this? Okay, so that is quite, uh, we will always see that things. Okay, but in this case, we need to know first, uh, the component of F in the directions of motion. The component of F that in the, the directions of motion. So, this is the, uh, the lifeboat. Okay, this is the lifeboat. Okay, uh, normally uh, the, the situation is the lifeboat is put on a ramp. Okay, so when they latch some uh, lock over here, okay, the lifeboat will slide down and we free fall uh, to the uh, sea, for example, uh, to the water, right? So obviously, okay, uh, the lifeboat, okay, being placed, okay, in a ramp, uh, but some incline ram, okay, incline ram, but definitely you may see that this one will have its own MG, and the MG is always a uh, straight downwards, okay, because uh, MG is weight, obviously, okay, MG is weight, and weight is in the position of straight downwards, okay, so, wah-wah, and the ramp is the 2.5 meters high, okay, this ramp is 2.5 meters high, and of course, with some angle, so we may need to calculate uh, its own component that parallel to the whatever displacement. So now, right now, uh, we may see that this MG may have some, okay, so MG is straight downwards. This one is MG sine theta. This one is MG cos theta, okay, so this one, okay that parallel to the displacement. So we need to consider, okay, a co mg cos theta, this one, mg cos theta times with our displacement in order to calculate the work, okay? But right now, we doesn't have a theta. Okay, we doesn't have a theta yet, okay? And we need to, to know a theta using some a simple trigonometry, okay? A simple trigonometry, which comes from the H and also B. So, in this case, okay, uh, the D is 5 meters. Okay. The ramp is 5 meters long. Ramp is 5 meters long. Now we have 2.5. So, we may calculate it using mg, which is how to get the F cos theta. F is mg, W cos theta. H times with HD, H over D. Why H over D? Because H over D will give you cos theta. So, Katoa, okay? So, Katoa is H over D, okay? Uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So, this one will give you 24,400 Newton. 24,400 Newton for the F cos theta. Okay, so the F cos theta is the our component of cos that parallel to the displacement. And then, in order to calculate it, we need to use F cos theta times D. So we may get 122 kilo joule or 122,000 joule. Okay, so simple. Okay, maybe uh, we may use another other types of uh, uh, ways, which is uh, strictly, strictly, uh, we calculate it using W equals to F D cos theta. Again, the same thing happens because F is uh, mg times D, and then you you multiply with the cos theta. So obviously, we may get the same value: one hundred and twenty-two kilo joule. The idea here is uh, we need to know the the component of force that parallel to the displacement. And we need to differentiate between the, which is the displacement. Uh, for example, in this question is the ramp, the length of the ramp, and also the height of the ramp. The height of the ramp is 5 meters. Okay, this is the height. Okay, but we can use this height in order to get the theta. Uh, right, so that's how it works. Okay, so you need to 
memorize this. Okay, don't we, we we must always refer to our figure. Okay, look at our figure. Uh, uh, try to imagine if the, it doesn't give you figure, you need to sketch some figures in order to understand the concepts. Okay, all right. The work done may be may be positive, zero, or negative, depending on the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay, we may we see that the positive. Uh, we may, we can see. Uh, because of the fact, uh, the the work is not a vector quantity, therefore, uh, the work should be uh, right in terms of positive or negative work. Okay, we need to know, we need to write it down in terms of positive or negative. Okay, so that will depends on the angle, obviously. Why? Because from zero to ninety, it will give you a positive work. Okay, it will give you a positive, positive work. Okay, if the angle is 90 degrees, okay, the zero will, uh, it will give you zero because remember, W equals to FB cos theta. Whatever you put the theta equals to 90, then work will be zero. So this is the time where you see that, okay, when the component of F is in the perpendicular, per, uh, component of F is perpendicular to the Displacement, what happens is because of theta becomes 90. When theta becomes 90, the work will become zero. Okay, because the component of force is not parallel to the, it perhaps it becomes uh, as perpendicular. This is where your yeah, component of force perpendicular to displacement. Okay. So whatever happens when the force, okay, uh, in the other parts, which is in the uh, for our second quadrant or third quadrant, so you may see that all the effects the value, okay. So when you when you look at the situations when the theta is greater than ninety degrees and less than two hundred and seventy degrees, it will give you negative work okay so simple uh, look at the cos theta and try to define it using quadrant quadrant one cos will be positive quadrant two cos will be negative quadrant three cos will be negative quadrant four it goes back to the quadrant one uh, the, the quadrant four will give you positive value okay or positive value but that's why they, it says here, here theta is greater than negative 90. Then where is negative 90? The way you write down negative 90, it should be from this line, okay, this line towards the negative 90. So this is negative 90. So from quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, it will give you a positive value. Why? In the quadrant 3, it will give you negative value. 2 and 3 will give you negative value. Okay, all size features crazy. So that means all here is quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Positive value of work. So you don't have to memorize. If you know where is the angle, then you should know the work it will be positive or negative. Okay. Right, so there is more than one force acting on an object. Okay, so remember I've, I've showed you uh, just now uh, the work is equivalent to F D cos theta. Okay, F D cos theta. Remember about work, but remember that force uh, comes okay, with the package of submission of F. That this submission of F should be contribute uh, should be divided into submission of F X and submission of F Y. So we need to determine. Obviously, the work will only work, so uh, the work will only work to the parallel uh, to the component of force that parallel to the displacement. For example, now we have a certain situation. Now we have a normal force. For example, we have a a, a work. Uh, sorry, a, a wake here. We have a a frictional air, air friction. 
Okay, and the displacement is going uh, down the hill. So what is the, uh, uh, how can we write down it? Okay, so in this case, you remember, now we have submission of Fy equals to zero. What is uh, Fy equals to zero? Because it involves, uh, the, the car doesn't float. Okay, the, the car stays on the, uh, on the surface of the road. So n minus mg equals to zero and equals to mg. Okay, now we have air friction in the component of force. Okay, component of force that parallel the displacement. Okay, regardless of the directions, but uh, air friction is in the, uh, is in the uh, same or the parallel to the displacement. Okay, so we need to establish some submission of Fx equals to Ma in order for us to understand F and to use that F into the work. Okay, so let's look at these examples. All right. There are two ways to understand this one. Okay, but first we need, we need to use this example first. Okay. A car of mass M goes down a hill inclined at an angle of uh, phi. Okay, they use phi over here. Okay, doesn't matter. It's just a matter of uh, symbol. Below the horizontal. Okay, the car is acted on by three forces. The normal force exerted by the road. A force due to air resistance. Okay. And the force of the gravity, which is the G. Find the total work done on the car as it travels a distance B along the road. Okay. So, the question is, the real question is, find the total work. Find the total work done on the car as it travels a distance B along the road. Now we uh, uh at first okay at first step okay we try to divide it okay we try to do it uh, one by one for example now we have a normal force okay what is the work for the normal force uh, against the displacement okay for example a normal force is here okay now we calculating the work okay uh not simultaneously but we calculating the work a one by one based on one force uh, towards another okay so for example now we have a normal force let's look at normal force okay a normal force is a uh, in y axis okay normally uh, we have a certain Cartesian coordinate as x and y like this because due to the inclined plane so the displacement is in the x axis while the normal force is in the Y, uh, y exists, displacement is X exists, so the theta is 90. So obviously, this work will get you zero. Okay, the work will get you zero. Okay, so settle for normal. How about uh, MG or W? Okay, so this W, okay, look carefully. Theta, uh, this is not theta, this is phi. Phi is here. So we may write down that, okay, W, okay, obviously it's a, uh, uh, we'll have a, a straight downward positions, okay, the direction is straight downwards, okay, due to the gravity, okay, so we may write down its equal component, which is here, mg cos phi, well, at this point, mg sin phi. And maybe if you want to write down as the one that they did is uh they calculated here here as the 90 minus 5 so you can write down as mg cos uh, mg cos uh, 90 minus 5, uh, something like that. Okay, you may also uh, calculate it using mg or mg sine 5. Okay, either one. So, and then obviously, uh, we, we, okay, 
we calculate it uh, afterwards. So right now we have air friction. Air friction is theta equals to 180. Remember, 180 is in the negative x axis, which is uh, opposing the directions of motion. The, the motion is in x axis, uh, while the, the 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 force is in the negative x axis. So what happened? So we should write down as a negative air frictions. Okay. So how can we write down? All right. So let's look. Okay. This is the normal force and the cos theta. Look at this first. Okay, the normal force work to the normal force is N D cos theta, which is N D cos ninety. So times zero, so we'll get zero. So this one is here number one. Okay, the number two we have air friction. This is number two. So air friction D times uh, uh, air friction uh, times D the displacement cos. 180 okay cos 180 is negative 1 so it will give you negative f uh, d okay it doesn't give you any value just uh, a simple notation like that okay so right now we calculate using work from the uh, mg part okay so in the mg part remember uh, we have mg cos phi over here, okay, we have mg cos phi, and now we have mg sine phi or mg cos 90 minus 90 minus phi. Okay, so which is the, we need to choose, which is the, the one that can give you value, not zero, definitely here. Okay, mg cos 90 minus phi or mg sine phi will give you bad value because that is the component of force that parallel to the displacement. Look at the color. Uh, the, the displacement is in blue color line and obviously our mg cos 90 minus phi or mg sine phi is in the same direction as the displacement. So that will give you a value to that. Okay, uh, By comparing mg cos phi okay, which is here mg cos phi will not give you any value because the theta is 90. Okay. The theta is 90, therefore, okay, we only consider that as mg d cos phi or mg d sine phi, like I'm used to say. So right now, we only have the value. Okay. The one in the bracket is all the value for the work. So the total work. Okay, the total work is based on the total force for every the total work for every forces in the system. Now we have a normal force, we have uh, we have a normal work, we have a uh, air friction work, and we have a, uh, a work uh, a weight uh, a, a force for the weight. Okay, a force for the work, which is we have zero. We add everything. We have negative air friction. Okay, times d. And we have MGD sine phi. Okay, MGD sine phi. Okay, that is an one, one possible ways. And look at how this simplify. Okay, by using a free body diagram. Okay, for example, now we have normal over here. We have air friction. We have MG sine phi. We have MG cos phi. Okay, but we all uh, we just to consider that component of force that parallel to the displacement so our displacement is here okay this is our displacement okay the displacement is in the x axis therefore we should always consider the component of force that is in the x axis which is f air and also mg sine phi so therefore the answers for our for w is W equals to submission of F dot D. This submission of F is what? Mg sine phi minus with air friction times D. So that will give you the same answer as the one we did before this. Okay. So meaning that for work done, 
Okay, we need to know the component of force that parallel to the displacement. Okay, so let's look at another example over here. Okay. An Eskimo returning from a successful fishing trip pulls a sled. Okay. Loaded with salmon. The total mass of the sled and salmon is 50 kilogram. And the Eskimo exert a force of magnitude 120 on the sled by pulling on the rope. Okay, dia tarik rope. Dia tarik tali itu ke arah certain tempat. Okay. Here. And part A, how much work does he do on the sled if the rope is horizontal to the ground? Okay, so at first stage, uh, the rope should be here. Uh, ke bawah. Horizontal. And uh, not that the one in the figure. Okay. Uh, because we need to know that situation first. If there is situation, the force, uh, uh, the force is in the x axis parallel to the this x axis and displacement. So we can consider F dot D. But if there is some angle involved, we need to do F D cos theta. So F D cos theta. So at part A, theta is zero. So when theta is zero, obviously we will use we will we will use F dot D. One hundred and twenty times by five. So we may get six hundred joule. Use a proper unit, 600 Joule. So what happened if, how much work does he do on the sled? If theta, the number B, eh, theta equals to 30, and he pulls the sled the same distance. With the same distance, but right now, he tried to pull the sled with a certain angle, slightly certain angle, which is here. So you need to know, you need to do some... Uh, uh, component resolve into a component because now we have f cos 30 f sin 30 so remember we don't consider y axis okay, we just consider f cos theta but at first okay at first it doesn't include any friction it doesn't include any friction okay because in the question it doesn't state anything yet yeah, anything yet? Any questions doesn't say anything yet. Okay, uh, so we don't consider. So regardless of the situations or or the or the sketching or the graph or the figure, okay, the question doesn't state that there is a rough surface or whatever. Okay, so we need to know. So right now for part B, we need to consider one hundred and twenty cos thirty. 120 cos 30 times 5 to get 520 Joule. Slightly lower compared to the what he do when he try to pull the sled horizontally. Okay. When he try to pull a sled horizontally, okay, so he need to use 600 Joule. When compared with that certain angle, so it will reduce to 520 joules, slightly 80 joules different between the value. Okay, so let's look at part C. Uh, at a coordinate position of 12.4 meters, the Eskimo lets up on the applied force, a friction force of 45 newton between the eyes and the sled brings the sled to rest at a coordinate position. Okay. When you look into the questions, okay, when you look into the questions, there will be a, uh, sometimes, there will be a point where uh, the, the main questions doesn't include any uh, friction. So you need to use that things, okay? Whatever happens to the uh, sub-question, okay? For example, part C or part D may have a friction or force. That is always uh, referred to part C and part D only. Okay, part A and part B doesn't involve any friction. Okay, so that's why the question doesn't put any friction. No, no friction involved. But uh, as the rest of the questions, it always, uh, uh, the part C, for example, it have a, a friction. So you need to add another, another, uh, uh, another point of the, where there is some friction involved in part C. 
Okay, so that's why we need to consider a friction. Okay, so that the submission uh, of F involving frictional force because right now Eskimo lets up, okay, on the applied force, so there will be no force, but instead of that, uh, it's just a frictional force. So in the frictional force, it's 45 Newton, uh, 45 Newton, so there is another force uh, we should consider, okay, but right now, from the 18.2, okay, 18.2 meters, so it been reduced to 12.4. Okay, and the original is 12.4 meters. Uh, and then the current position is 18.2. So you need to minus it. 18.2 minus 12.4 times with negative 45. Why the value is negative? Because uh, you need to know the friction is always opposed the motion. Okay, always oppose the motion. If the slabs want to move to the distance uh, which is on the positive x-axis, the friction will move to the negative x-axis. So that's why the value is negative. And you always know that the, the friction works against the motion. So against the motion, theta will be 180 degrees. So cos 180 is negative 1. Okay, negative 1. So that's why we will give you negative 20 right okay so this is another example of sledding suppose that in examples 5.1 the coefficients of kinetic friction okay 5.1 is related to this example okay it's also about sled Suppose that examples 5.1, the coefficients of kinetic friction between the loaded 5 kilogram, 50 kilogram load slab and snow is 0 0.2. Okay, so the coefficients, okay, which means here we have a mu k. Okay, coefficients of kinetic friction 0 0.2. The Eskimo again pulls the slab 5 meter. Exerting a force of uh, 120 Newton at an angle of zero. Okay, angle of zero. That means it's, he tried to pull the sled uh, with no angle. With no angle. And obviously, that uh, will give you 600. Okay, so 0 0.2. Okay. As I think, uh, find the work done on the slab by friction and the network. Okay, so first we need to calculate. Okay, we need to calculate friction. Uh, the friction by uh, 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 work. The friction work. Okay, work for the friction, which means we need to consider Fk. What is Fk? Mu k times n. Uh, what is mu k times n? Uh, mu k is coefficients of kinetic frictions and n is the normal force. How can we get the value of n? So by using submission of Fy equals to 0, n minus mg equals to 0, n equals to mg. Now we can put mg over here. So mu k mg times with displacement. So you may get what? Negative 490 joule. 490 joule. So, what is the total network? So, total work, or sometimes we call it as network. The total work happens, for example, uh, on part A, in this part, okay, the value is 600 joule. Value is 600 joule if he try to pull the sled horizontally and with the some certain uh, frictions. So, 600 Minus with 490 joule. Okay. And another uh, force is zero. So we just consider this one. It's to be 110 joules. Okay. We know that we don't have to put the direction because it is a scalar quantity. Okay. 
Now we look at another uh, possible. Repeat the calculations if the applied force is exerted at an angle of 30. Okay, an angle of 30. So right now, if you do have an angle, so it also involves uh, uh, this, for example, at y axis, uh, the situation now we have uh, like that. This is slab some air friction okay this is uh this is the force normal mg okay so right now we have f cos theta f sine theta mg and f friction so at at y axis okay, at y axis it have normal it have mg and it have f sine theta. Okay, f sine theta and and mg. Okay, so at y at, 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 at x exists, so we may use one hundred and twenty joule that we calculated here. Well, which is the different? Okay. So right now everything in the air friction in the x axis we calculated using here. Okay, because mu k have been different. Okay, the friction is like f k equal to mu k times n. So what is n? Uh, n is right now m g uh, minus f sine theta. M g minus f sine theta. So you put this value inside this times with d. So right now the value is four three zero joule. Okay, four three zero joules. Uh, before this we calculated. The value of total work is 520 without frictions. So it may be used 520 minus with 430. So we may get 90, well, 90 joules in the difference between the, the one. So uh, the friction will always oppose the motions and will give some difference in the value. For example, if uh, the friction involved uh, in part A, it reduces okay, the value from 600 joule to 110 joules only. Okay, 110 joules. So he need to do the south 110 joules. It's not because of because of that is due to the friction. Okay, the friction will give you some uh, 110 joules and this one, okay, from 520 joules, okay, but with the frictions. It becomes ninety joules. The total, the, the total work. Okay, because the friction is improved. Okay, is uh is uh the value of uh friction increase from uh negative two six one newton. Okay, it should be negative two six one joule. Okay, to the four hundred and thirty joules. So the situation now we need to consider it using uh, work okay remember for today work is equivalent to f d cos theta where f is the parallel uh, component of f parallel to the displacement okay so i think uh, that should be enough for today okay do you have any questions Yes, sir. Okay.